<clears throat> okay, now what I've determined is I didn't want to destroy my inside trim, my log trim on the inside, so I'm going to, I'm actually just cutting all this stuff out because I'm going to come back into here and uh, fill this out with wood. So this is what we're doing here. I'm sawzalling all that stuff out with a metal saw blade. on the inside just a little bit. sheetrock and then I can use wood to finish, finish the inside of the frame. It might take a couple blades to do it, but uh, these are pretty tough blades. It's turned into another mess here, but it's only a few minutes worth. So, I got a little bit lucky right here. Instead of having to sawzall all, all this out, I can I see I can just basically pull that whole mess out. Right there. And that cleans up the whole inside here. I saved all my trim here, my log trim. I busted one little piece here, but that's okay. It's just cedar. I can glue that piece and tack her back in place, but... Basically, I got. She's ready to be uh, reframed out again here. So that's really cool. What I'm going to do, I think I'm, I was going to put a piece of plywood on the bottom here to start with, but I, what I think I'm going to do is I've got the uh, beautiful three quarter inch poplar plywood, US made, and I'm going to cut a piece. It's 82 and a half inches long. And so what I'm going to do is rip this plywood right in half. So I'll have a two foot by eight foot piece and a two foot by eight foot foot piece. And I'm gonna cut it to length. And then I'm gonna screw that piece of plywood up into here. And it'll screw right into that spot right there, the outside of the building. And it's gonna stick out, okay? But that's gonna be the top of my window. The reason I'm doing it that way is because I wanted to gain a little bit more height because I've got 48 and 48, 49, 50, 51, and I need to make a 48 inch opening and I want to raise up the sill, not drop the top, because the couch already here is 30. So, okay, you'll see what I'm going to do. Okay, after measuring, I found out that I had to make the window rough open and a lot bigger. So, I'm cutting into the wall. measure out my three windows to make my bay window and the rough opening wasn't near enough near big enough so I had to open her up. Now 
Okay, so uh, I've cut that side over here. I need a 91 and a half inches wide to make my bay window here. And now I've got, the only, I don't mind doing this a bit, the only problem is all the dust that I create. Now I've got to actually cut a little bit of this stud. Fortunately, the old part of the house, this is an original stud and this is an original stud and it's just the framing in these old houses from 1947 is a little funky so now I'm gonna have to go outside and I drill a pilot hole up on top there so I know where to start my hole or my cut on the outside and there's another pilot hole I just drilled right here and I punch through right here and up on top and I'll strike a line and uh, I'll do all my cutting from the outside, so I'm basically sh shaving that stud, and of course nothing's plumb and level in an old house like this, so that's going to be my next prod, next deal here, just shave that right off, and I'll have my rough open and all set, and then I can actually start the framing process of the window, so it's kind of cool, very cool. After a little bit of work and with the sawzall and some hacking and chiseling and using a pry bar, I basically we had a lot of tough nails in here and these uh, sheetrock screws. They're if you're slicing through wood on a long section like this, it'll dull the blade real quick. So basically, you just get out as much as you can and then tear the rest out with uh, pry bars and chisels. So it looks pretty good be my top piece here and I've made a couple of measurements to get to get it so my side window fits here my picture window is going to be long in here my other side window is going to be right here so I'm actually going to cut this center line here and then straight down and that'll fit that'll fit right into that opening on top and bottom I got to cut two pieces like that so I'm going to do that right now This is the bottom plywood for that big bay window. Saw blades a little dull. Okay, you're gonna have to bear with me for a few minutes, but uh, this is, I've got this is gonna be my top piece, identical piece for the bottom, and then I'll stud in between. Well, you'll see how I do that, but I have to put this upper piece in, so it's gonna take me a second. Okay, bear with me. I just got to get my gloves on. I try to do everything as easy as I can. So these are my ledger boards.
and give myself a little room to slide that piece in. I'm putting the good side down. It's like an extra hand. The great thing about these these guns is it's like kind of a light framing. It's a finished nail gun or a light framer, real light framer, so you can mess around with it and then put all your stuff together and then go and screw everything together or a bigger nail gun. That way you can keep things level, you can pull them around. And they'll probably be finished wood all around this. This is just rough framing on the inside. Okay, now I'll go cut my other piece and we'll put, we'll figure out where the bottom goes and we'll put the bottom in. I'm going to put my sill, a 2x6 sill in. So bear with me. Get the 2x6 sill and then ply it on top of it. It's just beautiful, it's a rigid.
right on the money. Got the sheetrock on the back side of the wall holding up the center. Perfect. Level. Now I'll cut the sheet of plywood and put plywood on top of that.